this is the action that we started from the discretized action with respect to the continuous one that uh, we considered at the very beginning of uh, this uh, small series of lectures and last time we started from this submission here and we proved that this submission should be equal to this uh, to this uh, result here this will be useful when we do the calculations for uh, the path integral in this video i just want to rewrite in a, a discrete manner the propagator so the propagator can be written like this it is an average of the field phi without the hat because the hat is related to the Fourier transform so the discrete Fourier transform we will see it in a few minutes but just give me some time phi sub j times phi sub s so I'm, I'm using two subscripts j and s but you can use whatever subscripts you want this is an average and the average is performed over the path integral in this case uh, i'm not going to write the full formula but you have to think that you're going to average using the path integral but we will do it in uh, the subsequent video or maybe at the end of this one but we will see so let me write the average like this with these angular brackets and now i can rewrite the product phi j phi s i want to rewrite it in the fourier domain in the let's say in the frequency domain so we can rewrite phi j as a discrete fourier transform in particular an inverse discrete fourier transform so we sum over n phi hat sub n and then we have e to the i k n x j so this is how we go from uh, the, um, the Fourier domain to to the space domain and you can think that phi j lies in the space domain that's why here we have x j and to phi hat sub n we associate k sub n which is the frequency k sub n you can think of that as the, as the frequency for example then we multiply by summation over l phi hat sub l e to the i k sub l times uh, x sub s like this we can also rewrite this in the following way so here this is equal to we sum over n and over l so instead of writing two summations two summation symbols i'm just going to write one summation symbol with the uh, n and l specified below the symbol in such a way that uh, it is reminiscent that we have to sum over n and over l without cluttering our notation so i'm just going to write one summation symbol then i would have phi hat sub n phi hat sub l but i'm going to write the mode of phi hat sub n times the mode of phi hat sub l and then i have to remember that i also have to consider the facet and the phases are associated to these uh, two complex uh, uh, complex uh, quantities so phi hat sub n for example is equal to mode phi hat sub n and then i have e to the um, raised to the phase i phi sub n and similarly for phi hat sub l and i can write therefore e to the i then i have k n x j plus k l x s and then i have plus let me put a square bracket here phi sub n plus phi sub l like this and then i have this angular bracket now in order to get a non-zero result from uh, the path integral the non-zero contributions will come only when n plus l is equal to zero so if n plus l is equal to zero we know that phi sub n plus phi sub l is also equal to zero because phi sub n remember that is equal to minus phi sub minus n but minus n is equal to l from here so minus n is equal to plus l from uh, this equation 
Therefore, you can see easily that we have to have phi n plus phi l equal to zero, right? Because the phase phi sub minus n is equal to the phase phi sub l. We know that from minus n equal to l. So, so this must be true. Therefore, these two phases will cancel. We know that the result should not be dependent on the phases. Therefore, this is why we can do it. Because in the path integral, when we sum over all the phases, we will not get any contribution from the phases. Then, if n plus l is equal to 0, we also know that k sub l is equal to k sub n. Why is this? Well, because for uh, the frequencies, in general, we know that k sub l is equal to k sub minus l. But minus l is equal to n. From here, you can see that. And therefore, we can see that this must be true. And all of this means that this is equal to, we can rewrite that as equal to. Here we have a summation over just one index. So in this case, I'm calling the index n, but you can change the name of that. Because we know that we have phi hat sub n squared, because we know that L is equal to minus n. Here we have e to the i, k sub n, and we multiply this with xj minus xs. And we can also rewrite xj minus xs as x sub j minus s. And this is due to the fact that xj is proportional to j, and xs is proportional to s. And if this is true if you think about how you define the Fourier series or how you define the discrete Fourier transform. In the Fourier transform, xj is discretized in such a way that it is proportional to j, and so on. So it's not uh, anything particularly strange. It should be familiar. Now, if we define j minus s as another integer h, we can rewrite this uh, propagator like this. It's an average of phi sub s plus h, where s plus h is just j, and then we have phi sub s, like this. And this is equal to the average of summation over n mod phi hat n squared e to the i k sub n x h, like this. And if you want, this can also be written as summation over n. We take the average of phi hat, mod phi hat sub n squared, and then I have to multiply by e to the i k sub n x h. So you can see that the propagator is not dependent on s. It only depends on the difference between these two indices. And it makes sense. The propagator actually depends, if you think about it, when you have the, the continuous propagator phi of x, phi of y, and you take the average, you know that this should be proportional to the Dirac delta of uh, x minus y. So in this case, it would be the, the four-dimensional Dirac delta. In particular, we have some differential operator here in front of the Dirac delta, but that's not really um, the point here. The point is to say that we really need to be interested in the difference between x and y. Anyway, the point here is to show, and we showed that, you can see that if we want to go from uh, the um, space domain to the frequency domain, we can, uh, so if we calculate the propagator in the space domain, we have to take the product of these two fields. But if we are, in the frequency domain, we are interested in the mode of phi sub n squared. So this is what will appear in uh, our path integral. Remember that we wrote the action in the frequency domain. So in our case, it is convenient to use the, the expressions in the frequency domain. So in particular, we are interested in calculating the average of mode phi hat sub n squared.
and we know that if we want you can go back to the space domain by taking the inverse transform of this but now in the frequency domain this is equal to 1 over z the partition function that uh, I will uh, define below but first let me write the expression here 1 over z and then I have to integrate over d phi hat so this this is the measure in the frequency domain this measure would be something like this so now let me cancel this i will write it uh, later this is equal to or actually proportional to the differential of uh, mode phi minus capital n d mode phi minus capital n plus one dot 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 then you have d mod phi minus one and then in principle you would also have the mod phi sub zero here but remember that uh, we assume that uh, phi hat zero was zero because we took a let's say a field with uh, its average being equal to zero so we don't need to integrate over phi zero so this is this this would be a trivial integration that would be simplified by the integration that we also have remember in this uh, normalization which is the partition function we also have the same measure here in the partition function the integration measure also contains d mod phi hat sub one d mod phi hat sub two d mod phi hat sub three and so on all the way up to d mod phi hat sub uh, capital n and you have to think that capital n is very large in principle we would have to integrate over the phases as well but we expect that the result is not affected by the phases and this is related to the central limit theorem when we sum over a very large number of phases the result will be independent of the phases therefore we can avoid putting the phases in the measure then we have e to the minus the action remember the action the action is mm, so we have minus one half summation over j then we have mod phi hat sub j squared and then we have k sub j squared plus m squared and we also have minus lambda over four factorial if you remember that we have to multiply by three and then here we have uh, summation over n mod phi sub n squared all squared minus summation over n mod phi hat sub n to the fourth like this right and then here so this is exactly z this is the partition function so i'm not going to to write z at this point this is exactly the partition function remember that here we have to integrate mod phi sub n squared so in, in particular in order to avoid any confusion because here we are summing over n let me change the subscript uh, for the propagator so let me call it h here we have h and that's different from this uh, summation index here we have h as well so this is how you in principle you can calculate the propagator it seems a very complicated expression and indeed it is very complicated also let me finish writing uh, this measure so we also have to integrate over mm, mod phi hat sub one d mod phi hat sub two and so on all the way up to infinity so this uh, capital n here you should think that this is very large and in principle you have an infinite number of them so the measure is not well defined mathematically but you will see that it will allow us to do the calculations and we will be interested in expanding let's say this, this um, exponential to first order in lambda so in particular the calculation that we want to do if we truncate the um, 
the expansion of e to the minus lambda multiplied by something to first order. I'm going to take this part. I'm going to put it here in front of uh, the integrand, uh, which is uh, mod phi hat sub h squared. And then here we have 1 minus that. So this is the expansion of e to the this term here. So we have truncated the expression to first order in lambda, and we will do the same thing for z here. So instead of writing an equal sign there, I should write an approximation symbol here. So z, the partition function will also be equal to this. And we will have to do some manipulations there. In particular, z, as I said, is equal to, let's see if I can extract it from here. So I take this and I paste it here, but I have to be careful because I have to erase this field here. This field should be erased. And this is the expression for z. So basically z can be written in the following form. So it can be written as z0. z0 is um, 1 multiplied by this integral here. Then we have minus lambda over 8. Lambda over 8 is just lambda over 4 factorial times 3. 4 factorial is 24. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So we have lambda over 8. And then we have to multiply that by the this integral here. And inside the integral, we also have this quantity. We will call it B, like this. So this means that Z, um, in particular, 1 over Z that appears in the calculation of the propagator here, we have 1 over Z. This is equal to 1 over Z0 minus lambda over 8B. And this is approximately equal, since lambda is small, approximately, so we will um, truncate, as I said, the, the calculation to first order in lambda. So we will approximate this as 1 over Z0, and then we have plus 1 over 8, B over Z0 squared, lambda. So if you want, uh, we can also rewrite this as 1 over Z0, 1 plus 1 over 8 lambda times b over z0. Now, we will have to be able to calculate b over z0, and in particular, we will also have to calculate this integral here. So we have uh, rewritten this z as z0, in particular, 1 over z is 1 over z0 times this. So this is outside the integral. So we will have to calculate b over z0. And then we will have to calculate this uh, integral here. So here we have uh, mod phi sub h squared. So this is a different integral. Whereas b, this coefficient b, does not contain that phi hat sub h. It contains this expression. So that will give rise to different integrals. We will see the calculation next time. But let me tell you that in general, these are Gaussian integrals because you can see that here we have uh, Gaussian integrals because um, I mean, this exponential can be written as a product of exponential of the following form, e to the minus one half then you have a uh, mod phi hat sub, uh, sub i squared, k sub i squared plus m squared, and you have a product of such exponentials. You can see in general that these terms, all these terms will contain, uh, in particular, you can also see this one, for example, this multiplied by phi hat sub h squared. That will uh, 
be an integral of the following kind phi hat sub n1 squared mod of it then we have the mod phi hat sub n2 squared and then you also have the mod phi hat sub h squared and then you will have to integrate you will have to integrate over in particular so in, in this case you are considering only this but the index i can be either equal to n1 or it can be equal to n2 or it can be equal to h right so if n2 and h are different from n1 and if i is equal to n1 the integral for example in this case if i is equal to n1 would be proportional it would be proportional to uh, this uh, the variance which is the inverse of this so you get something like one over k i squared plus m squared and when you divide by z zero the proportionality factor will be equal to one so this will be the result that you get so try to follow my words or what i'm saying so it is something that uh, it, it is not too complicated to understand and then remember that after you perform the integration you also have to sum over n1 and over n2 so you have to be a little careful and in particular there are some values that uh, you have to take into consideration like for example when uh, n1 is equal to n2 so when n1 is equal to n2 this will become mod phi hat sub n1 to the fourth and now this will be a different uh, integral so the integral over phi hat sub n1 to the fourth will give you if you do the calculation when i is equal to n1 and assuming that h is not equal to n1 this will give rise to three this three comes from the integration of uh, this uh, variable so it is related if you think about it to the kurtosis i don't know if you if you have some familiarity with statistics but it is related to the kurtosis of a random variable of a gaussian random variable but never mind it is not important that you know what kurtosis is it is spelled like this kurtosis but it's not really important it's just a calculation of uh, it, it is the expectation if you want of a certain variable x to the fourth where the expectation is calculated with respect to the to the Gaussian probability density. So you're, you, we are assuming that X is distributed according to the Gaussian distribution, right? Because indeed, if you think about it, this is a Gaussian distribution, right? Anyway, here we have three multiplied by the standard deviation raised to the fourth power. So sigma squared, is one over k one k in this case we can put k n one squared plus m squared and then we also have to raise this to the second power because here we have the um, standard deviation raised to the fourth so it's sigma to the fourth or if you want it's the variance so this is the variance squared and so on so this is just the idea because now i have not done any calculations but it's how you have to think, let's say, of um, the calculation uh, of these integrals. These complicated integrals, they are just Gaussian integrals, and they can be performed without any problems. Basically, we will calculate these integrals in the following video, and we will have to, as I said, calculate integrals of the following kind. So we have the expectation of variables of the kind x squared and these variables are associated with the Gaussian distribution then you also have uh, the possibility that some of the indices are equal so you have something like the expectation of x to the fourth or in particular if you check for example this multiplied by this in some terms th there is the possibility that you have to integrate x to the power six so these are the possible integrals that we have to carry out and we will do it next time so this is the starting point but next time we are doing the calculation